Hey guys, welcome back to Hello Science channel. My name is Ivan and today we have a super quick video highly requested for undervolting the Gateway Creators Edition. This is the Walmart special that was number one in my list of great deals for the end of last year. Best gaming laptop for the money. Purchased that one for $650 from Walmart around Black Friday. And it was still a great deal for about a couple months afterwards. Now they raised the price a little bit, but I'm expecting it to lower it down uh, furthermore soon since we have new generations coming up very, very soon. So we'll see how that's going to end. But for now, we're going to undervolt. We're going to show the options in the BIOS and then we're going to talk about at the end. This is going to be a super quick video on how to undervolt the Gateway Creators Edition. Very, very easy. We're going to just go ahead and restart the computer and... Uh, while it's restarting. Remember to mash the delete key on the keyboard while it's restarting. This way we're going to be able to access the BIOS. Once we are inside the BIOS very easily, uh, first one is the main tab. We're going to move to the advanced and we're going to scroll down all the way to the overclocking feature. We're going to skip that over and do the core voltage offset. So we can select the prefix minus or plus. Obviously we want to do minus since we are undervolting and uh, the core voltage offset. I'm going to do the maximum, which unfortunately is only 50 millivolts here. Anything above that will result to a message. If I put 90, let's say you'll see invalid input range and it's going to default to 50. So this is the maximum we can use. It's going to be 50 millivolts. So once we select that, we can go all the way to the exit, save and cha changes and exit. And from here, we're going to be back into our desktop with undervolted Core i5 10300H. Now I'm going to put side by side some results with uh, CPU undervolted and the one by default and you will see what the difference is. So this is when we undervolt, you'll see the maximum temperature on the package. We have 85 degrees. This is after playing 15 minutes, the same exact spot on the dead stranding, which both utilizes the CPU and the GPU to the pretty much maximum potential. And you will see here, we hit maximum package of 85 degrees. But most interestingly, uh, we are able to hit the core at 4.5 gigahertz what exactly the CPU is supposed to be going. And again, the GPU maximum temperature was 70 C. Now, if I go to the one without the undervolting, you'll see the maximum on the package was 88 C, which uh, we are gaining three uh, degrees lower when we undervolt and we are gaining two degrees lower on the GPU. So 72 on the GPU here versus uh, 70 on the undervolt and 88 on the CPU here versus 75 on the undervolt. And again, here you will see on the core, we could barely hit the 4.4. We didn't even touch the 4.5. So better performance when you undervolt. So definitely it's worth it for a couple minutes of work. Uh, you're getting a higher clock speeds, lower temperatures and better performance overall. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, back to the conclusion. As you see, we have clearly some good benefits on undervolting. Couple degrees, but that's a plus. We have three degrees on the CPU and we have two degrees on the GPU, but at the same time, we are increasing our performance. So it's kind of a beneficial both ways. Not only you're lowering down the temperature, but you're increasing your performance. As you saw, the processor is actually clocking up higher to its uh, intended 4.5 gigahertz. And if you're not undervolting, it stops around 4.4 and it's refusing to go further up there. Um, so yeah, for me, that's a clear win. Very easy done. I mean, five minutes, get into the BIOS, set it up to the maximum possible, which is 50. And then off you go in the windows, run all your games, run all of your benchmarks, run all of your workloads or video editing and it's still going to be beneficial. For me, that's a plus. Yes, it's not a great difference. It's only three, four degrees, but still much better. Added bonus, when you have lower temperatures, the fans is going to spin a little bit less and the noise is going to be a little bit less than what it was before. Although not anything really to write home about, but still it's a benefit. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Hit the thumbs up if you like the video, stay tuned to the channel, subscribe if you're new, hit that bell notification to get notified for the next videos. We have some very interesting things coming up very soon. I'm going to test the HP Mate RTX 3070 and compare it to the HP Mate RTX 3080. So stay tuned for that one. And uh, yeah, as always, have a wonderful day.